ครับ there's Miss Good Ball Okay, good afternoon, everyone that's already here. I'm just gonna share this button. Okay, can we all see that? It's working. Yeah, see that well. Okay, perfect. Just check on. The attendees. So we've got 37 at the moment. I'm just going to give it another uh, another two minutes. So will you, will you go through the slides because I don't have host controls or will you pass me over as host? Uh, let me see if I can do that. If I can do that, I will pass it over. Can you click on the three dots? Uh, yes, make co-host. Does that not give you control? Doesn't look like it. No, I think I'll have I have to be the host to go through the, the PowerPoint. Okay. Um do you mind if I just um no, navigate through the point? When I stop talking, you'll need to go on to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so it's 7.32, so we'll, we will make a start just because um, we do have a football game at 8 o'clock and I know people don't really want to miss that. Um, so I'll hand over to you, Mr Lee. Yeah, thanks, Raf. Thanks, um, everyone. Welcome to uh, our Zoom ski trip meeting. It's great to have everyone join us. We wish uh, we could do this, obviously, in person, but as with a lot of things, uh, we're getting used to this, but hopefully... Someday soon, there won't be another variant and we can get back to kind of actual human contact. Um, I just want to kind of say, and, and I've done this a few times with, with Miss Goodborn, uh, who's our trip guru, when we've, we've talked about trips. Just to reiterate to parents and carers and students and staff, a huge thank you in particular to Raph and, and uh, Miss Chisholm, sorry, and, and Miss Goodborn for all the work on this. But trips are the hardest thing I've ever taken part in with in my 10 different schools I've worked in and I've done day trips I've done afternoon trips I've done overnight trips I've done foreign trips and they are incredibly difficult and and you know they they are something we shouldn't ever take for granted and they're something that only takes place because we get fantastic providers like obviously our colleague joining us today and kind of running with their expertise but it's the staff team that give up their time so freely I'm not paying them any extra Sorry, Mr. Chisholm. Sorry, Ms. Goodborn on this. Uh, they're doing this because they want to provide a fantastic experience uh, for the young people that are lucky enough to get selected on this. And this really is a very, very special trip. This is one of these, these trips that, you know, is about making memories and is perhaps in a lot of cases, the first time perhaps will be the only time uh, that, that children get to go skiing. Uh, myself, I've never been skiing in my life. I'm not volunteering for the trip, Mr. Chisholm, but um, but you know you know what a fantastic opportunity for for those who are going. And I've already touched upon it. There will be some disappointment here. Okay, we we have a certain number of defined places, um, and I'm really really sorry about that. That there will be some some children who will be disappointed. Now I know Mr. Chisholm will talk more about the kind of how we're going to go through the process for that and 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 dealing with that, but. You know, that unfortunately is one of the kind of the, you know, the downsides of this um, behaviour as well on the trips. Obviously, behaviour needs to be impeccable. But in the lead up to this, I am not sending on a trip away with my staff, any child who I cannot trust to represent the academy, to follow the school ethos, to seek that which is good, right and true, to be ambassador for our country, our area, our region abroad, if I cannot trust them. So that means that we have to have outstanding excellent behavior in the lead up to this so you know and that starts from now it starts from from before now as well uh, and i just want to kind of flag that up my decision is final who goes on trips 
uh, like with a lot of things, uh, I will have the casting vote. So again, I just want to reiterate that. Debt. We have some families uh, in our academy who are in continual debt with us in th for things like family lunch. Um, again, I am not going to sanction a child going on a trip with the parents paying out all this money if I'm owed 200 odd pounds for family lunch uh, debt monies. The, the most important thing is to keep in credit with that. Notwithstanding, if of course um, you are a family at this time or, or in future months who suffer financial difficulties, then we are here to help. Uh, and I know I've certainly had a conversation with Mr Chisholm about that even, even this afternoon uh, when he popped to see me to have, have a chat with that. And I don't want that to be a barrier if any parents and carers are here and thinking, oh, well, I'm not, not sure I, I can kind of afford that. And I know obviously we've got payment plans and, and so forth in order to support families. Actually, I was just talking about this trip, having uh, just tea with my family. And I was talking about, you know, the opportunity we were saying, oh, my, my boys were like, oh, they'd love to go on a trip like this when they go to secondary school. Um, but I want to be clear about that. If, if we can help out with families that there are struggling and perhaps circumstances change, then you just have to contact us and make contact and keep that dialogue open. And like we always say with family lunch as well, let's say for instance, you paid half the money and then one member of the family loses their job and we've got difficulties there, then you need to tell us and not bury the head in the sand. Come and talk to us and I'm sure we can find a, a, way, a way forward. The other thing to say, and again, we touched on it at, at the start, and Miss Goodball will probably go a, a, a shade of white here. We we had a Spanish trip that was meant to go um, this time last year, nearly. I think it was July, wasn't it, Miss Goodball? It, it was meant to go, and then obviously COVID had struck, and the British government were, were banning trips, so we we kind of pushed it forward another year. Um, now we ended up with all kinds of conversations and, and lots of parents and families moaning about it. And we have to still pay for the trip and so forth. Ultimately, that trip has ended up being cancelled. Ultimately, thanks to Miss Goodborn in particular, we've ended up getting a full refund on our insurance. Um, but but that is because you need to listen to us. And when we say we're going to do things like we're going to carry on with all making all the payments, even though the chances are of a trip going ahead were probably very small. That's because in the long run, we were able to get everybody's money back for that. Um, now. This trip is a long way away um, in lots of ways, but it's one of those things that in school life will blink, we'll click our fingers and this trip will be coming round, and we'll be on the bus journeying uh, uh, over to the ski trip before we know it. And when we think about our year 11s that have just left us, you know, it seems like five minutes ago, Miss Goodborn, that they were, you know, jo joining us on that first day five years ago. So. Very excited to hear about this trip. Again, huge thanks to everyone joining us, most particularly the panellists today, and for all the hard work. And uh, I'll, I'll hand back to you, Mr Chisholm, but thank you for, for all your efforts so far to date. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr Lee. Um, right, so the, the purpose of this meeting is to give uh, a general overview of, of what's in, uh, involved in the ski trip, um, what's expected of, um, of the students, um, of the parents, and, uh, and then kind of give you an opportunity if it's something that you're no longer interested in to let us know before we uh, before we pick the, the names out of a hat. So uh, the first thing, the most important thing, I guess, is uh, is the payment schedule. So on the, on the letter, it did say that the, the full cost of the trip is £950. Now, there is a non-refundable deposit that would be due on Friday the 25th of June. So that's next Friday. Um, so just over a week from now, and it does need to be paid and all future payments need to be made by parent pay. Um, because obviously um, family lunch is paid via parent pay, I assume that um, <coughs> the majority of parents would um, would have a login to that. If you don't have a login um, and you do need to do that and your child is selected, then please let me know as soon as possible and we can get that sorted out. As you can see, there are three different options um, for payment. Um, so after the first payment of £100 is made on um, the 25th of June, next Friday, the first option is to pay monthly. So that would be £54 a month, starting from July. So that would be starting from next month. The last payment would be made October 2022, um, the October before we go. The second option is um, to pay per term. So there would be four payments after the non-refundable deposit of £212.50. And then the last, pay uh, last payment option is uh, a one-off payment, and that will be made um, September 30th after we have um, paid our £100 deposit. 
okay so you normally fund double deposit so there are there are three options once you are selected um and we're all set up i need you to let me know what option you are going for um the option will be set up on parent pay so that you can make those payments um as and when you need to um, so there's just a, a question in the chat about payments continuing during the school holidays. Um, so those payments, because they're on parent pay, they, you can make those at any time um, as per the schedule that you choose to go with. Perfect. Thank you, Miss. Yes. So it will continue because it's because it is, um, as you said, um, online. You can continue to do that. I'm just going to pass over to Miss Goodborn. So first of all, I'd just like to say that the trip will be a really enjoyable and valuable experience for all of the students that get to go on it. Um, but I do want to also reiterate that um, signing up to the trip is a big commitment for both students and parents in a number of different ways. Um, first of all, um, there are a number of things to consider in terms of financial costs. Um, so as uh, previously mentioned, um, after the first £100 deposit has been made, this is non-refundable. Um, so if you then decided later not to attend the visit yourself, um, this cost would be non-refundable, uh, particularly because after we've made um, the deposit payment to the travel company, this money will no longer be in, in the academy with us. And this is a bit like if you were to book a holiday yourself and then you opted not to go, um, you would ex you'd likely expect to, to lose that deposit. And however, this will be different if um, we had to cancel the trip due to COVID, and I'll discuss this on a later slide, as I'm sure our colleague from the travel company will also mention. Um, it's always been um, the case with trips so far today, and Mr. Lee mentioned this too um, when he spoke at the start, um, that we do have the right to remove a child from the visit if they have poor behaviour, um, as this could pose a risk to the safety of the visit for all students attending. Um, this means that the students need to commit to exemplary behaviour, outstanding or good behaviour um, from now until the trip goes out. Um, it's not just in the month or so before the trip um, that we'd want that good, good behaviour from the students. It's a real commitment from now on um, if the students do want to attend the trip. Um, in the case that a student did exhibit poor behaviour on the visit itself, we would ask the parents to make arrangements to collect the student. And as this is a, an overseas visit, um, that, would, that would be at the expense of the parents. So it is a massive commitment to make. We need to be able to trust all of the students that attend. Um, as Mr Lee mentioned, we um, have to ask students to ensure that their parent pay accounts are in credit for family lunch, first and foremost, um, before committing to paying for the trip. But please, um, if circumstances change, please let us know so that we can support with that. Um, and there are a few other costs to budget for as well, in addition to the £950 um, towards the cost of the trip. And the first thing to mention is the cost of a passport. Um, I'll talk about this in a bit more detail later on, but if your child does require a new passport before 2023, it is around £50 um, to pay, depending on how it's applied for, as you can see on the slide. Um, I'm, I believe that our colleague from the travel company will mention a specific kit list in a bit more detail, which um, we, we um, are going to need to ask parents to kind of purchase. Um, but we'll talk about specifics nearer the time of a visit and maybe whereabouts you could purchase this kit. Um, it is quite a specialised list of equipment, but it is required for the nature of the visit. And this is in order to keep the students safe and comfortable throughout the time. Um, so all meals are included within the 950 price of the tour. So spending money will be kind of um, minimal, um, but the students will need some pounds and euros for the, um, for the journey down and the return journey as well, um, as we'll be stopping off at service stations along the way and they'll want to purchase food and drink. And they may also wish to, of course, purchase souvenirs whilst they're on the trip too. Um, the final consideration really is to do with um, travel times. Um, so we are traveling by coach and by ferry on the way down um, to Italy and on the way back as well, which means that the journey each way will be around 25 hours. 
uh, which is a long time to spend traveling on a coach. Um, the reason for, that we chose um, this method of transport really is to keep costs as low as possible. We understand it is already an expensive trip. Um, so we wanted to be able to keep it as ac accessible as possible to give as many students a chance to go skiing as possible. Um, I completely understand that this might make students um, not want to go on the visit because of the, um, the journey times. But of course, our first stages will keep the students with travel um, sickness as comfortable as possible throughout the journey. Um, I understand that this could be a factor in, in the decision process. Um, taking all of these considerations into account then, when signing up to the visit now, um, please ensure that you're confident that you will still want to attend. It is um, quite a long time away, as we mentioned. Uh, for example, if maybe one of your friends wasn't successful in gaining a place on the, on the trip, would you still want to go then? There's lots of kind of considerations there. So please make sure that you're, you're confident, you're happy that you'd like to go. Um, let us know if you don't, but we, want, we look forward to taking students away. Okay, sir. Um, so thank you, thank you, Ms. Goodborn. So we know that the um, the expectations of Q3 Langley are very high, um, and it's not going to change for the trip. Um, so we expect the academy ethos to be um, embodied um, 24 seven. Um, it's something that, that, that the students are very aware of that we want to be Langley 24 seven. So that will um, take place on the journey. Um, via slant and steps. It's, it's an expectation that, that we will always um, have. And we need to make sure that the, and that's why we talk about behavior, the students that are going, um, they need to be happy with this. Um, if you have this conversation with your child and they're not happy with this, um, then we need to know so that they're not in the, um, in the draw when we are taking the names out. Because again, this is a massive expectation. Um, the other thing that, that might be um, a deal breaker for some, is the fact that phones will be allowed, but at night time they will be collected. Um, obviously on the slopes themselves, it's good to have that if there is an emergency or anything like that, they have their phones, they are contactable. Um, but in the, at night time, before they go to bed, we will be taking the phones back. Um, safeguarding uh, and also they don't need any, any um, distractions from um, sleeping. I guarantee they will be exhausted at the end of the night and they will be sleeping. Um, but we want to remove um, that that element. So phones will be taken um, and collected each night as well. Um, do we have another question? There's a question about travel time. So I'll put that in the chat. It okay. is 25, 25 hours approximately each way on the coach. And um, so that's, um, well, it would be 50 hours in total approximately. Yeah. Um, there's a message, sir, about um, places on the trip. Um, so we'll, we will talk about that a little bit later on in terms of who is being selected. Um, but I'll, I'll be doing the draw tomorrow and then um, notifying people on Monday. I will mention issues around kind of COVID a bit later on if I could answer that question in my next piece. Um, in terms of the staff that are attending, um, so staff have not been uh, allocated yet. The reason for that, as we said, it is very, um, very far away in the future at the moment. So 2023, um, we don't know what things are going to change. Circumstances do change. So we haven't yet selected the members of staff, um, but there will be one member of SLT. Um, there'll be at least one first aider and then myself. Um, I'll be the trip leader. So we will have um, a range of uh, members of staff with experience um, to handle all different types of situations. Um, once they are um, selected, you guys will be notified as well. Okay, so Ms. Goodborn. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so I'm just gonna talk in a bit more detail about um, travel documentation that will be needed. Um, so, of course, the first thing is, is the passport, that the students, all students will need the passport in order to travel. And the thing now is that after Brexit, passports now need at least six months left remaining on them when travelling. Um, that means that if your child doesn't have a passport 
currently, or if their passport will expire before the 18th of October 2022, uh, you will need to apply for a new one in order to be able to travel. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that you apply for one now, um, um, but this will need to be done in good time nearer to the date of the trip. Um, so usually, um, previously a passport would take around three weeks to arrive. Now it is around 10 weeks. So um, we do need to make sure that we're leaving that 10 weeks at least um, before the trip, that we're doing that in good time. Um, the second thing that the students will need is a valid GHIP card. So this is a global health insurance card. And this previously used to be known as an EHIP card, which you may have heard of. Um, so if you currently have the EHIP card, you can continue to use that until it expires. But after that time, you will need to apply for the GHIP card. Now it is totally free and you can, um, there is a link here um, on the PowerPoint, which we can send out via email. Um, and that's the link that you should follow in order to apply for this. There are other places where you can do that, but they will charge money for it. So you should go through this link only, really. Um, so the card isn't the same as travel insurance, which the Academy has. Um, it, it allows us to access healthcare abroad in the same way that an Italian citizen would. Citizen would, sorry. Um, the final thing to mention is that um, students don't require a visa to travel to Italy. Um, because it's classed, it will be classed as a short visit, um, so we won't need that. Um, however, there are talks about a new system coming into effect in 2022 called the European Travel Information and Authorisation System. Um, if this comes into effect, we would obviously let you know about that if it's something that we have to apply for. It is likely to be free for under 18s anyway. Um, so if there are any updates about travel documentation, we will update parents and carers. Um, please let either myself or Mr Chisholm know if your child doesn't hold a non european if your child holds a non-European passport, because it's likely that we may have to uh, apply for additional documentation. Um, so let us know and then we can process that application if necessary. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm just going to talk about COVID-19 as well. I did see that there was a question about this in the chat function uh, before. Um, so as Mr Lee mentioned, and it was in the newsletter last week as well, we've sadly had to put all visits on hold for the last year and a half, and we did have to cancel some previous visits, which was really, really sad. Um, but we're delighted to be able to offer this opportunity again and for students to actually be able to go abroad on visit. Um, we do hope that restrictions will have eased by 2023. It does seem a long way away, but it is likely that they might still be around by the time that we travel. Um, so I hope that you find the information on this, this slide reassuring in a sense. Um, first, the first thing to mention, and I'm sure that our colleague from the travel company will mention this too, uh, but one of, the one of the reasons that we chose to book um, with Holsbury is for their COVID guarantee, book with confidence. Um, so if we were unable to travel due to either government guidelines or the Department for Education guidelines, or if um, Italy was put on... Um, the red list, for example, um, we would get a full refund um, if we were unable to travel for any reason related to COVID. And um, this guarantee is on the website, on the travel company website. So parents and carers can go on and have a little look at this if you want to. And I hope that really puts your mind at ease with this um, in terms of the financial side. Um, in addition, um, planning of the visit will be obviously in line with COVID guidelines guidance. Um, we do carry out an extensive risk assessment anyway. Um, we have um, a really long risk assessment even um, for the building to be open on site anyway, um, which you can view on the Academy website. And I would also be happy to share our risk assessment with parents and carers, obviously following GDPR guidelines, if anyone um, wanted to see that, so that you're just confident with the measures that we put in place um, to minimise Kind of the risk and the spread of um, COVID-19. Thank you, sir. Okay, so the uh, the selection process, um, the part that everyone is um, obviously really interested in. So there are 43 places, so 43 names will be picked um, from a higher random. Um, I did see a question um, asking about the merit of behaviour. Um, 
Now we've got we've had over 130 people interested, um, and this selection process is going to be very very difficult. And and like Mr. Lee said, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be disappointed. Um, so essentially, when we're taking behaviour into account, is if we already know that a child has um, has poor behaviour, they won't be put into the draw to start off with. Um, so you will only enter the draw if your behaviour um, is exemplary. So that's why uh, we've mentioned behaviour. It would be very unfair to um, to not have a, a student selected because um, they um, and someone with bad behaviour was, was pulled out. So we, we won't be um, entering anyone into the draw um, if their behaviour track record is um, isn't acceptable. So as well as the 43, I'm going to put an extra 10 names so that we have uh, a reserve already ready. Um, as we see, the, the interest is very high. And because there are payments uh, and there is a schedule, we need to make sure that as soon as um, and if someone does drop out, that um, there is somebody ready to go already. So the, thought, the, the names will be picked out tomorrow after school. Um, and then I will send out an email on Monday, uh, Monday evening. So you will have time. Um, I know a lot of people are mentioning that they want to be able to see who, um, see if their friends are going before they commit to it, which I totally understand. Um, we are going in 2023. So friendship groups may change between now and then, um, but it's also a massive opportunity, um, not only to um, experience something that not many people will get to, but also to make new friends. Um, I really understand it and, and I get that people do want to go with their friends, but it's just something to consider. It is a long time away and you will make more friends. Um, so don't let the fact that um, not all your friends are going stop you from committing to something like this. It is a, a once in a lifetime experience. I am hoping that after this um, successful trip, it's something that we do that do run regularly, but we can't guarantee that we can't bank on that. And if this is the only opportunity you get, I'd hate to hear that you dropped out just because your friends weren't going. So that is definitely something to consider as well. Um, so as I said, there'll be 43 names picked out from a hat at random. Um, that's the fairest way to do it. The reason why we didn't do it first come first serve is because um, interest slips were going to reception, they were coming to me, they were going to learning consultants and PLDs. Um, so because they were all being handed in, in different um, places, I feel as though it'd be very unfair to just do first come first serve. So that's why all the names will go into a hat and they'll be pulled out at random. The non-refundable deposit, deposit then needs to be made on that Friday. Okay. Um, are there any other questions, uh, Ms. Goodborn, that are about um, selections? Just a clarification that the draw will be made tomorrow. Um, so yeah. The, yeah. And um, there's a couple of other questions. One about uh, a passport. Um, so if it is a European passport of any, any kind, that's absolutely fine. Um, we wouldn't require any kind of additional documentation to be applied for. Um, there's a question about um, kind of skiing lessons and I've, I've put a, a response on the chat already and um, that the resort that we've chosen is beginner friendly so we wouldn't expect parents to seek additional ski lessons for the students that wouldn't be an expectation at all. Um, yeah again in, uh, in response to in response to that in terms of getting lessons beforehand um, again to make it more cost effective um, at the moment, it's not something that we are planning to do um, to go to either a dry slope or a, or an indoor slope. That's not something we're planning to do at the moment because it is an extra cost. Um, and as we said, the um, Pian Cavallo is very beginner friendly. So everyone is, um, is going to be given lessons and the lessons are included in the price as well. So it's not something that we, uh, like, like Ms. Goodborn has just said, it's not something that we expect you to be um, proficient in skiing before you come. Um, you can learn. Um, when you go there. When I went um, in school, the first time um, I, put, I put on a set, a set of skis was um, when I was in Austria um, and I learned very quickly and the kids will definitely learn very quickly. Uh, any other questions that I need to manage now? Yeah. Finally, sir, um, a couple, um, so um, do um, parents on the reserve list need to pay the deposit by the 25th of June? No. Um, 
that shouldn't be that shouldn't be necessary. So hopefully, what would happen um, again because the, the deposit is non-refundable. Um, once you pay that hundred pounds, you should have the expectation that you're not going to get that back. However, if you um, are in a situation where you need to drop out and we have someone on the reserve list that is ready to go, then they would then need to pay their hundred pound deposit. So that should um, instead of going um, to the company, that could potentially go to you. Um, but I need you to um, be committed to once you pay this deposit that it is a non-refundable deposit. And of course, obviously, in the event of COVID as well, that's when we would get the full money back if we couldn't travel due to COVID. But if a, a student opted to drop out themselves and that, that's their decision, that's when potentially the deposit could be at risk. Um, there's a question about roomings, but I think our colleague from the travel company will mention that in her piece. Yeah, uh, so I've just seen one about um, mixed, mixed trivia groups. Um, so it's, it is available to year seven and year eight. Um, so when they go, they'll be in year nine and year 10. What I'm gonna aim to do, um, because I have the, um, the interest slips separate in year group, um, I aim to try and pull out a, an even number of each so that there will be a, a mixture, an even mixture of year groups. Um, there is also just a question about kind of risk assessment wise um, so um, we will be taking staff with us who are first aid trained um, and um, we'd expect the um, we'd give our expectations to the students as well to keep them safe so it would be as if we're at the academy really to keep them safe um, and if the students are following our staff instructions and then injury shouldn't take place and um, all the risks will be assessed to minimise those but we will take fully first aid trained staff with us if something did happen or if a child was travel sick, for example. Uh, is there anything else that we need to I go off? Everything at the moment, sir. Okay. Okay, so I will pass over to uh, Miss Hall. Thank you. Thank you uh, all for logging in this evening and thank you to Mr Chisholm for all the hard work that's been put in place so far towards this trip and it will be a super trip. So we're, we're travelling down to Piancavallo um, in Italy, one of my, one of my favourites. Um, so I know that you'll have a really super time there. Can we... Um, the slide. Thank you. So just to let you know a little bit about uh, who Halsbury Travel are, we've been established since 1986 and we're a school and groups tour specialist. So we carry around 40,000 passengers each year and the largest uh, independent UK tour operator for schools. So because we work with schools, we have um, all the accreditations in place, uh, such as safety management systems, we're fully financially protected. Um, we've got ABTA Atoll School Travel Forum accreditation as well. Um, we have comprehensive travel and medical insurance, and we also have a 24 hour number um, uh, back in uh, head office that can be obtained for the trip leaders at all times, um, as well as the, the COVID book with confidence guarantee as well. So actually, you've never been so financially protected with us on this trip. The two things that I just want to talk about, um, the School Travel Forum, um, we're actually an assured member of this. And what this is, it's a group of companies like ourselves, all school travel tour operators. And what we do is we, we group together to lobby the government for the best possible safety standards for the trip. So absolutely every single element of the trip um, that we provide. So that's from the coach from school, that's the ferry crossing, that's all the way down into resort, um, accommodation, ski school, evening activities. Absolutely everything is fully risk assessed and we are externally audited on that. So you can be assured of the highest possible safety standards for uh, every element of the trip. And um, we've also been awarded the learning outside the classroom badge as well. Just a quick picture. Here we are, all are in blue. Um, so if you see the next picture, so the, that's just a few of us uh, in uh, one of our ski resorts. Um, but you will have a uh, Halsbury representative as well on the trip. They'll have a have an integral part of your group that, that likes to ski with you and have meals with you and, and be another set of eyes and ears for the, for the trip leaders as well. Okay, I've got a video on this. Um, do you want to, I know there's been a lot of information, do you want to see if we can play this? Okay. 
can you see this at the moment? No, but we could share the link perhaps afterwards. Let's see, let me see if I can share this. This is a test of my internet connection at the moment. Alsbury Ski is renowned for crafting amazing school ski packages. We use our extensive knowledge and expertise to make sure every trip is out of this world. We are passionate about providing truly once-in-a-lifetime trips for schools, all set against the stunning backdrop of breathtaking resorts and mountains. At Halsbrook, we go the extra mile to make sure that every ski trip is so much more than a few days on the slopes. We think of everything to make sure your experience is simply unforgettable. We're dedicated to providing a personalised service that's friendly and professional. All of our approachable and friendly staff have a background in ski and snow sports. And So I don't think the sound is working on the video. So the sound's not working. When the groups are hoping to learn the ropes or take their ski skills to the next level, we can put together a bespoke package based on their ability and competence. Safety is vitally important for us, which is why we only offer... Moonlight snowshoe walks to shopping trip. But ready for an exciting time on the pistes, and no stone is left unturned to ensure everything goes to plan, even if the unexpected happens. All our trips are covered by winter sports travel insurance, east closure cover, ski breakage cover, and medical insurance. Book with Halsbury Ski for an unforgettable experience, surrounded by breathtaking mountain scenery, on a trip that students will enjoy and talk about for years to come. So I'll just bring it back. Thank you. So, um, so I've got a few pictures just to show you what the resort looks like. It's a really beautiful resort. Um, it's it's set around a um, it's a purpose built resort, and you and you drive up um, from the valley floor, and it's it's set around a, a one way system. You can see I don't know if you can see my mouse, but right at the bottom here you've got a one way system that goes all the way around um, the resort from, from one end, you've got some a, a snow park with sledging and um, tubes and things. And then this side here, you can see the ski area. You've also got a village centre where you've got a, a supermarket uh, where you can buy your provisions, maybe some presents for mum and dad and uh, some souvenirs and, and things like that. But there's, you know, pocket money was mentioned, you know, other than buying, you know, maybe, maybe, you know some extra sweets or a, a, a kind of drink or something in the evening there's really not much there to spend your money on because you are there for your sporting activity throughout the week 
Here we go. And there's some there's some beautiful views. And this this restaurant here at the bottom that you can see, it's right at the top of the mountain. Um, and when and I and I guarantee that almost all of you will be skiing the entire mountain by by the end of the week. And, and when you get up there, you're rewarded with one of the finest views um, on a clear day. You can actually see the sea from the top of the mountain. It's absolutely stunning. Really quite, quite bizarre, but very, very beautiful. Um, that's where it is right at the top here. So as you can see, um, you've got um, it's a really good beginner intermediate resort. So what you will find is you've got your accommodation that's um, around here, around the, um, oh, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, it's towards the center um, of the village. You've got the accommodation. You've got two beginner areas as well. So you've got two areas of what's called either a magic carpet um, or, a, or a, a, a tow, a little button lift um, where you start your skiing on both sides of the, the ski area there. And then what happens is you, you know, progress throughout the week, um, there's chairlifts that take you up and down and you've got, um, as you can see, it looks like the majority of the runs are red. Um, all the runs in a ski resort are colour coded and they're colour coded depending on how difficult they are. Um, you have actually got a, a black run that's used as a World Cup um, run. They had the, the World Cup snowboarders doing their downhill there a couple of years ago. Um, so that will really test your ability. Um, and you've also got the red runs as well um, and, and the blues um, for your beginner area and progression. A lot of the runs are also like big motorways. So they're really wide. So when you start to ski and you start to master your snowplow and linking your turns, you really will see your progression quite quickly throughout the, throughout the week. OK, so the accommodation that we're staying in, so you can see on the picture there, you've got a red circle. So you can see from one of the slopes here, um, it's it's such a short walk from the uh, the beginner area where you'll start your skiing every morning. You've got it's it's a, a purpose built accommodation for four groups. So you've got lots of space. And ultimately, that's what we're looking for is, is you want to be comfortable. You want to have lots of space um, and you want to have all the facilities there. You've got you're going to have all your meals in the hotel. So you'll have your breakfast. You'll go back for a hot lunch daily and you'll have your evening meal in the hotel as well. It's a large self-service um, restaurant. So they normally have a couple of choices of pasta, maybe a white pasta, tomato based pasta. Um, they might have um, like a schnitzel, chips, potatoes, vegetables, and they um, always have like salads and, and you know cold salads on the side as well. So there's plenty of food and there's always something for even the fastest of eaters as well. Um, they can also cater for any dietary requests as long as we know in advance, uh, we will let the, the catering staff know. There's plenty of space. Uh, there's room for a disco, there's entertainment rooms, games rooms, meeting rooms. So uh, plenty of space where you can meet together as a group um, in, the, in the evenings or afternoons. Uh, two spacious TV rooms. Um, there's a bar with mountain views um, where you can buy you know, soft drinks and things for the trip. Um, all the rooms, now rooming was mentioned. So all the students will be in rooms um, with students of your own school. Um, and they are all en suite, so you've got your own bathroom facilities, and they will be depending on the rooming that we get allocated. Now, the hotelier allocates the rooming about um, two weeks in advance, depending on other groups that are booked in, depending on boy girl breakdown, staffing breakdown. So um, you can imagine it's a big jigsaw puzzle, so we can't make any promises, but they're usually in rooms of, say, four, fives, and sixes. So Generally speaking, if you chose one person to share with, then you can can buddy up, you know, two with another two or, you know, maybe three. You know, that said in the past, if we've got a group of five, you know, special friends that want to be together, um, you know, we more than often can make it work. But you just have to, you know, we'll do our best. But that's one of the last the last things that happens on the, the run up to the trip. And like I say, it's just a two minute walk. Um, from, from the village centre, from the shops, from the ski school meeting point, from the, the, the ski fit. So, you, you know, literally it couldn't be any more convenient for you. And here's some pictures as well, what it looks like. So you've got uh, table football, you've got pool tables, you've got tables there uh, where you can sit and chat and talk about your uh, talk about your you know daily daily fun and what you've learned that day um, and you've got really nice spacious rooms as well with with the shower and um, all the bathroom facilities for you okay so you're going to have quite a busy day so it is it's, it is a full-on a full-on full week um, this is what the itinerary will look like um, 
So early morning breakfast, so you'll have about half past seven in the morning breakfast at the accommodation. Um, normally you'd come down already kitted out, so you're wearing your ski trousers uh, and everything ready to go. Have your breakfast and then you will take your ski equipment from the ski room at the accommodation. So that's where you pop your boots on um, and you grab your skis. Um, you will have a, a number allocated to you, so you use the same skis and boots throughout the week. Um, and then you meet the representative and then you walk over to the school ski school meeting point. Now you will have five hours of lessons per day. So um, normally um, it's around nine till 12 in the morning, come back for your hot lunch and then uh, around one till three for your afternoon ski lessons. So, you know, that's a lot, that's a lot of skiing, that's a lot of exercise each day. You'll then come back to the accommodation. You might want to just have some downtime, get changed, get showered, freshened up. Um, and then you know, there'll be evening activities. So again, the programme will be decided um, closer to the departure date, um, but there's a variety of things that, that can be organised. They could be out of the hotel, they could be in the hotel, it could be a games night, quiz night. Um, so you'll have something going on in the evening and that's either before or after dinner. And then you'd have your evening meal at about um, half past six every day. And that, that is the same every day um, throughout the week, um, apart from the last day. The last day looks slightly different because you travel home on the evening of the last day. So the day will look exactly the same. And then after the, the, the evening meal, you then get packed up to travel and you, you travel back through the night. OK, so there was a, a question about the, um, the ski school. Now, we use the local ski school. I've skied with the ski school director and they are absolutely fantastic. They're, they're all fully qualified. They're very, very passionate. They know their mountain inside out and they're all English speaking. Um, so you'll have your, your ski school time. So they will be allocated to you. So you know every day um, what times your lessons are, morning and afternoon, five hours a day. Now, there will be no skiing outside of lessons. Um, you, all your skiing will be with your instructors uh, throughout the day and you, you will always remain on piste as well. So you're always skiing on green piste with your instructor. The equipment that we use, um, so we've got local ski hire, um, high quality equipment. It's always upgraded and serviced um, after each, you know, each time it's been, it's been rented out and it also includes the helmets as well so helmets are included and it's actually a legal requirement that you wear them in Italy as well so they must be worn on your head each time that you've got your your boots and skis okay so a little bit about that's Neverlandia so that's one of the little snow parks they've got they've got some sledges and wingos and things that you can go uh, go down the hill that's uh, I've done that that's great fun um you've also got a supermarket nearby um there's you know there's there's restaurants it's got a lovely village feel to it um, cafes, there's a doctor in resort as well. Um, there's also, I mean, it's, it's one of the best resorts for, for evening activities. There's a, a huge, huge ice skating rink there. Um, there's discos, um, avail you know, availability to do discos. And you've also got on the Thursday night, um, is a torch lit descent, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm not, I won't tell you too much because it's a really cool surprise when you get there. Um, but there's uh, there's a, a nursery slope, which everybody will be skiing and you get the opportunity to ski down um, holding candles. Um, and then you make a circle at the end and there's a, and a few little surprises. And then uh, on the Thursday night, it's the place to be. They put, uh, you know, everyone has a hot chocolate or a Coke and there's, you know, a bit of dancing and music and it's, it's really, really good fun. Um, and then you've got sledging as well at Neverlandia. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's plenty going on throughout the week. So just to give you an idea of the facilities and resort here. So we've got, you can see the huge sports hall um, there. They've also got trampolines and, and rock, um, you know, climbing walls. You've got the ice skating rink as well there. You can see how big that is. And um, that's, you know, that's really good fun. Again, it's a two minute walk from the hotel, all of these facilities. Um, and they've also got an Alpine coaster, which you can see in the bottom picture. It's, it's like a, it's like a roller coaster that you sit in, but with a handheld brake, it's ever such good fun. Um, so it's like a, a sledge on rails with a brake um, and they have that as well available in resorts. So there's, there's plenty to do to get the, you know, full on winter sports experience. Um, I've mentioned the representative, so you will have a Halsbury rep with you throughout the week. And uh, like I say, they are, um, they will be a local language speaker. We always employ linguists and um, they will know the resort. They will be there in case there's any problems. Um, they will be there to support the trip leaders. They will be there to help with evening activities. And like I said, they just want to be part of the part of the gang and, uh, you know, get to be with you and, and to help out where they can. OK, the travel arrangements. So we've spoken um, about the, the travel and this is a long, you know, it's a long coach journey uh, down into resort. 
um, but it's it's comfortable. We use executive coaches. And the way in which it happens is that you will have a driver that will meet you from school and take you down to Dover. Um, and they'll take you onto the ferry. And then what you will happen is they will do a changeover. So that is called your feeder driver. And then you'll be allocated uh, two drivers that will drive you down into resort. Now, the reason that you have a feeder driver is because for health and safety, drivers can only drive for so many hours. So we can't max out on their hours. So we have the, the feeder driver that takes you down to Dover. Now, the two drivers will speak to the, the group leaders um, about their driving plan to get you down to resort, but they generally change um, change drivers every four hours and they will have a long break um, as well. So they will around breakfast time, they have their long break where everyone will get off at a service station and, um, you know, perhaps freshen up and then get some food. Um, so that you're you're taken uh, you know safely down to resort now. They have uh, facilities on board um, for emergency use, I would say, and they also have televisions, uh, DVD players. So um, if they, uh, you can put some age appropriate films on for your journey. Um, and I've, I've even seen coaches with USB points nowadays. So they're, they're, they're pretty comfortable. Um, so you'll have that, uh, that coach taking you all the way down there. Um, you generally leave school around lunchtime um, and then take an early evening ferry crossing. So by the time you get to get the ferry crossing, it's time to, to maybe have a, a pack up tea um, or, or to buy something there. So you need some euros or some or some sterling for the ferry. Um, and then by the time you get to the other side, it, it's, it's kind of bedtime. It's time to, you know, they, they turn out the lights. They're very discreet when they when they stop. You maybe put a, a film on, but you will then use that opportunity to, to sleep. Um, and then the next day, by the time you wake up, you know, you're, you're somewhere new. You've got different things to look at. So actually, it is a long way, but you will be sleeping for, for the lion's share of the journey. Um, and the same with, with the re return journey. Um, so the drivers um, will, what they will do is they will rest. So there'll be no access to the coach at all um, the, the day the day in which you leave. And then when they load, you'll load up the vehicle after your evening meal, um, you'll leave resort at your allocated time. And then it will be in reverse, you're traveling back through the night. So by that time, you'll be so shattered um, that people do tend to tend to sleep. Um, and there's lots of tricks. You know, I always uh, suggest taking one of those little skinny fleece blankets, take a pillowcase so you can shove your ski jacket in the pillowcase to make it comfortable for, you know, make a pillow for you. Um, so there's lots of ways to make it comfy. Um, but it is, like I say, it's, it is a long journey, but uh, a lot of it will be sleeping and resting. OK, what to bring? Um, there's a, I think if we go on to the next next slide, um, here we go. There's a, a ski wear list so we can we can share this. So you've got the information of what you need to budget for. Um, there's plenty of places in which you can buy buy equipment. Um, you can either hire equipment as well. There are some higher companies, um, but there's places like TK Maxx. Um, the Aldi do a ski week and my children have both skied using their their base layers are fantastic their socks are fantastic and it's very very inexpensive um you've also got facebook groups there's a facebook group called uh, ski bay so there's lots of places in which you can you can get what you need so you'll need the jacket and trousers um so salopettes and a, and a ski ski jacket um ski hat as well or something you know like a bobble hat just to keep your um head warm when you're not wearing your helmet ski gloves and goggles now they're essential um so sunglasses look look super cool but goggles are actually far better for you when you're skiing especially if you've got some snow coming down um it just protects your eyes and it helps with the flat light as well when the when the, the sky is looking very the same color as the as the slopes it really does help you with that you'll need uh, ski socks now you're skiing for five days so probably two or three pairs will be sufficient uh, warm layers um, and thermal underwear. Now you'll probably find that a lot of the layers that you, you've already got for, for various sports that you, you already do. Um, so just, you know, layer up, um, dress like an onion, you need lots of layers. Um, and then you'll also need your factor 30 sun cream as well, because the sun does reflect off the snow and you will get burnt and you don't want to be sore throughout your week. So you'd need to put sun cream and, and lip balm on as well. Um, backpacks on the list. Um, it's not necessary for the skiing because you're a walk away from the hotel. Um, but obviously you'll need to take your day bag on the coach as well for you. The other things uh, to not forget, so take a bath towel um, with you for your showers, sturdy boots for, for outside for the evenings or a, you know, a walking, a walking type boot, lightweight shoes for inside. So, you know, pumps, 
Converse bands, whatever, that kind of thing. And then gloves for non-skiing wear. It, you know, if it is cold and you go out in the evenings and your ski gloves have got wet, it's always handy to have a spare pair so you can leave one pair drying whilst you're out in the evening with your, your non-skiing gloves. And then you've got the euros uh, for your souvenirs. And uh, we always suggest as well to, to pack all your belongings in a soft bag or hold on as well, because it does make packing with the coach easier to have the holdalls rather than the, the hard Samsonite case style, style suitcase. Um, and the other thing that we always recommend, and we will remind you of it, is, is to try and remember to pack a, a pair of ski socks in your hand luggage on your journey, because um, one, when you're traveling, you might want to take your shoes off and keep your feet warm with your ski socks. And two, if you go straight into ski fit um, when you arrive, you will need to have your ski socks on you to make sure that your boots fit correctly. So rather than everybody rummaging through their luggage, try and find their socks. If you've got one in your backpack, then you know that you're, you're good to go. Any questions? Now, we, we, I haven't put a slide in about the, the, the COVID um, guarantee, but, but essentially what that means is that if the trip cannot go ahead for any reasons, and the reasons are on our website, but that includes the Department of Education advising against um, overseas school residentials that includes the country Italy being on a um, red or amber list it includes quarantine either um, this side when you get back or over there it wouldn't happen um, and the other important factor is say for example Italy was open and travel was open and, and everything was ready to go but the government in Italy had said the ski school or the ski resort must close then the primary purpose of your trip wouldn't be available, therefore it would also be refunded. So that decision is made 30 days prior to the departure date um, or any date within that 30 days. So everything is covered off um, in case of the situation whereby the, the trip can't happen. And that refund comes from us and it does include the deposit as well. So it will be a full 100% um, cancellation charge. Now, I've got any questions. I've seen some questions pop up on the chat. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've seen a few. We're just going to um, gonna go through some of them, uh, through from them, some of them now. Um, some have come through the question and answer um, function as well. So I'm just trying to uh, kind of make our way through those. I've tried to answer a few, so um, by typing. <laughs> uh, Um, so if, if a child is hospitalised, uh, would an adult stay with them um, all the time until a parent got there? Um, yes, they would. Um, they would stay with them um, at all times. Um, are all the extra activities included uh, in cost? Um, so the, as you saw with the hotel, there obviously there are places um, or there are activities that we can do there. Um, things that we, we definitely plan to do, uh, like a movie night, um, quizzes and things like that. Um, again, we know it's we know it is already uh, an expensive trip, so we are going to try and keep all costs to a minimum. So we will try and avoid um, any costly um, extra activities. Uh, and can they bring iPads, laptops uh, for the coach and rooms? Um, again, in terms of um, as as Miss Hall uh, mentioned on the coach, there are um, there is going to be a DVD player there. Um, so I would encourage, and obviously this, this is quite a way off, but I would encourage everyone to, to bring DVDs that, would, that they would like to watch and share with others. Um, in terms of bringing iPads and laptops. I'd, it's, I'd it's, say it's their own risk, sir, really. Yeah, it, it's, it's if you're prepared for it to be broken, to, to be damaged or to be lost, yeah. um, I wouldn't recommend, I know it is a long journey, but I wouldn't recommend bringing anything that you, you, um, that you couldn't lose. I think um, I think Miss Goodborn, we've had that before on day yeah. trips and so forth. I think I think we, we need to be very sensible about things like this. We've had a question about money. You know, every trip I've ever gone on, even down to London, I've had children turn up with hundred pounds on them. You know, like like it, it needs to be a sensible trip. As we said, you know, it's a little bit of money to spend on the service station on the way down and so forth. It might be you know a little bit of money to spend in in the souvenir shop and so forth, but. You know what? What we don't need is is certain children turning up with five hundred pounds in local currency, um, you know, and 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 turning up with the greatest iPad, the latest version, and all this kind of stuff. And then if it gets lost or damaged, and then parents moaning at us, right? So it's it's about you know being sensible about things like that, having enough stuff for a journey. As as we described, it's a twenty five hour journey, but you know, lots of the time the children will be spent asleep. Although although having done trips, 
You'll be amazed, amazed at how many children manage to stay up for 26, six hours in a row. Uh, and it's about, you know, providing the adequate kind of means to keep them engaged and so forth and not, not filling themselves full of sweets all the way there uh, and so forth. It's about, you know, generally being, being sensible. Well, a lot of these questions, and we appreciate the question at the time, you, you know, we can add a lot more detail kind of nearer the nearer the time for everyone you know these are these are kind of you know this whole purpose of this meeting is, is the general overview and i have to say it sounds from that presentation an absolutely wonderful resort it really really does um may even convince me to put to put my name down for the leadership one and that we'll see um a question about the um, extra activities so um are there any extra costs in terms of i, I believe the torch lit session um is included um, because that'll be done on the slope. Um, ice skating, they, um, I think there would be an extra cost. Um, the sledging, I'm not too sure. If, could, is that something you could answer, um, please? Um, about the sledging, is there an, is there an extra cost for uh, any sledging activities? Oh, is, that, is that for me? Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah we'll have, what we'll, have, we'll do is we'll have a look um, and see uh, what we can build in, and then we can define the final itinerary closer to the departure date. Um, Thank you. Uh, and then will, will children be able to phone home? Again, they will have the phones. The phones will just be taken off them um, at bedtime. Um, so they, they can be in constant um, communication with home. Um, I believe we'll have um, a trip Twitter feed um, or it'll be updated on the, on the Facebook. I know Mr. Lee will be in constant um, communication with us as well. So you will have uh, a constant update, but you will be able to speak to your children. Um, uh, any iPads as well, anything that um, they can view and connect to the internet, as again, will be taken off them um, at night. Okay, the, Mr Chisholm, there's an, another question about children mingling before we get there. You, you know, what I'd say, and I, I understand anxiety of parents, but this is one of the things about going on a trip, in that going on a trip, you will make new friends. I know Mr Chisholm kind of alluded to that at, at the very start. This is the point of going on a trip. You will be in each other's pockets as the children for 24 7 for for a week so you will you will make friendships that may well last the rest of your life you don't know uh you know it, it's that it's that kind of thing so of course we will do some preparatory meetings together but i wouldn't i wouldn't kind of worry about that we've had questions around sleep children won't be allowed to be staying up all night the staff will be close by staff are not allowed uh, on any of the trips that we do to drink alcohol on an evening, for instance, as well, on, on all of the trips. The staff are on hand. We've got the site, the, the, the staff who are there uh, as part of the, the, the ski resort as well. Um, and I understand people's anxieties, but this is why we're partnering with, you know, the UK's leading travel company and sending a whole team of experienced staff there. You know, children will not be staying up till two in the morning. You know, as I said, when I, when I mentioned at the start around trips being difficult for staff, they are. Because when I've been on trips abroad, what I do is you put a couple of members of staff who are on duty to make sure that the children go to sleep and they're waiting outside the rooms and so forth. And, you know, the rooms won't have telephones in. We won't we don't want parents contacting every every five seconds and so forth. If there's an issue, we, you, you will have the contact details. You know, Mr. Chisholm talk, talks about there. Yes, I'll put it on the Facebook page. I basically have to live with the trip pack by my side, by my bed for the whole period that you're away, that, that the children are away. And we're, you know, the company has a 24 hour line. You know, I, I understand anxiety, but, but this is, you know, th there's a lot of questions today that, that really, you know, we're, we're, we're two years away from this. Um, and these are kind of the questions for the kind of the meeting almost, you know, four weeks, two weeks before we actually head off on that coach journey. The no phones at night has worked really well on all previous trips that we've done and it's there to safeguard the students when they're in their rooms at night really um, and staff will always be on hand if um, they need to be contacted and um, we give the students wake up calls in the morning as well so that won't be an issue. Um, I, saw, yeah, I saw one question about um, how close are we going to be um in relation to the the rooms of the students we'll, we'll be on the same floor as them and they'll know where our rooms are um so again we we, we will be very responsible um with with the children 
think there's something about passports. Yes, passports get, get collected in and, and we look after the passports. That way we don't end up with a situation where we've got 43 children and we've got three that lose their passports. So again, everything will be explained. We, we will look after it. But the key point is, like we've had Miss Goodborn tri trips in the past where three days before parents have said to us, my passport for my child is out of date. And so, that, you know, that's why we mentioned that like the start uh, for that one as well. We'd, we'd set a date for passports to be uh, collected in so that the, um, the staff would um, carry those and then the students would receive their passports back um, probably around five minutes before we get back to the academy to ensure that um, those are safe. Uh, there is a sorry, there is a question about the hotel. Um, is Wi-Fi available um, so, so that the, the children can make calls home? That's a very good question. I'm almost 100% certain that there is. However, I would just like to just double check um, and pass that information to you to pass on with the FAQs, if that's okay. Thank you. There's you know, something, Mr Chisholm, about free time. I think we've already mentioned that. There's a bit of downtime built in. But, you know, what? one of the opportunities for a trip like, like Miss Goodborn when we've gone on the day trip to Lille is we, we would let the children go around the market by themselves in pairs in in groups and so you know one of the, the opportunities is to do that to let them to go down in the local village and so forth but again that would be carefully supervised when we do things like trips like this we send children off for half an hour 45 minutes they have a central meeting point they must come back to if at any time they're worried they can come back to and staff are always in the vicinity so, you know what one again I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm not preaching to the converted this isn't a holiday for my staff team right this isn't a holiday they are they are working 24 7 i go back to this is why trips are the hardest thing we have to do as teachers period full stop because they're not on duty and and that doesn't even include the amount of phone calls i'll be having with mr chisholm to check everything's all right and, and all that and you know celebrating the lovely pictures and the, the candlelight procession down the mountain and all that kind of stuff uh, but it'd be great but you know please don't worry about things like that it, you know that, that that that's what we're here to do that's why miss goodborn's here here as well as our trip trip guru that's why we partnered with a really good company as well so that everything is kind of catered for uh, how much was paid to so the the this um ski hire for the equipment it's all that's all included um so as we mentioned before the the only extra costs um that you would have to consider is when we're traveling any food that they want to buy on the way there and on the way back uh, and any souvenirs but in terms of spending money they won't really require much spending money because it is all included um, any extra activities that we do that may uh, incur an extra cost we will speak about that before we actually leave um, so you will be well informed but in terms of getting there skiing uh, and having a fantastic time that is all included in that price of 950 pounds um I am mindful that it is past 8.30. Um, what, what I would um, suggest is, I, I know you still have a lot of questions. I'm going to do the draw tomorrow. Um, once I do the draw um, after school and everyone is informed on Monday evening um, via email, um, I'll try to email parents as well as um, student accounts. Um, but once you are aware that you are now, uh, that, that you are picked, if you have any more questions there before you um, commit to this deposit, then please um, contact myself, uh, contact Miss Goodborn, and we can answer um, any further questions that you do have. Um, but there, there are a lot of questions that are um, a lot more specific if you are um, selected and are going on the trip. So I think we should hold those questions until you know uh, whether or not your child is, um, is going. Um, is there anything else that, that anyone else would like to add before we um, end this meeting? No, just a huge thank you, Mr. Chisholm, Ms. Goodborn, Ms. Hall as well, uh, for a really informative presentation. We look forward to the uh, the draw and, and, and ultimately a fantastic trip. Thank you, sir. No problem, thank you. Uh, sorry, I did see a question about will you be uh, informed either way um, if you are successful or not. Um, as I said, there were there were 130, um, 130 or over 130 that, that were interested. Um, I will do uh, my best to get back to everybody. Um, 
essentially what I'll do, I've got a list of all the email addresses. Um, a lot of email addresses bounced back. Um, it might have been because I couldn't understand the writing, um, a typo, etc. But I will um, let everyone know who is going. Um, I know that obviously the, the kids will be talking about it as well. Um, but I'll try my best to, to get back to everyone so that they know who is going and who isn't going. Um, but thank you very much um, to Ms. Goodborn, to Mr. Lee uh, and to Ms. Hall uh, for the time that you've spared this evening. Um, I hope we've answered enough questions for you. If you're no longer interested, if you haven't um, heard what you need to hear, um, then please let us know as soon as possible. As I said, I'm making the draw tomorrow. Um, so if you're wanting to remove your child from, from the trip, hopefully not, but if you are wanting to, then please let me know so that they are not in the draw when I do it tomorrow after school. Um, there is This meeting is recorded, so if there is anything that you want to watch back, um, it will be made available to you um, as well. But thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, Mr. Shizen.